How do you know what size robot to choose for a job? Well, robots are specced off of three main things, the number of axes, the payload, and the reach. The number of axes is how many joints the robot has. Most robots are six axis. So the first axis is down here at the base. Then the second axis is horizontal, moves this arm. Third axis, also horizontal, moves this arm. Then the fourth axis rotates this arm along it. And then the fifth axis moves the wrist up and down and the sixth axis spins the wrist. A four axis robot is pretty similar, except that it's actually missing axes four and five. So this arm does not rotate longitudinally and the wrist is fixed pointing down. You can use a four axis robot if you don't need an articulated wrist. So if it's okay for your part to always be carried in this vertical orientation, then that's fine. If the robot will need to reach into something at an angle, then you probably need to use a six axis robot. So next we're going to look at payload. There are different ways to decide a robot's payload, but kind of a basic rule of thumb is that the payload equals three times the maximum of the part weight or end of arm tool weight. This is just a general rule of thumb from experience when I was working in robotics and this is what we used and it worked. Um, just kind of like figuring out af after you use enough robots and enough tools um, and enough parts, then you kind of figure out about what a, a decent formula is. So as an example, let's say that the robot needs to pick a part that is 50 kilograms and it uses a claw that is 45 kilograms. So then the payload is going to be three times the maximum. So the part weight is 50, the end of arm tool is 45, max of 45 and 50 is 50. So three times 50 equals 150 kilograms. And then finally, the reach is how far does the robot need to touch? So you wanna pick the farthest point in the cell that the farthest point away that the robot has to reach. Figure out what that is and then add a little bit. So for the reach, that is going to be, if you're using X, Y, Z coordinates for the part, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. This is the distance from the robot to the point. And then we're gonna add 0 0.5 meters. Because if the robot only reaches the point, then it would be could be stretched out to its very maximum and not be able to, although it could reach that position, it may not be able to reach at the correct orientation. So adding a little bit, makes sure that the robot can reach something at whatever its desired orientation is. So let's say that point coordinates are x, y, z equals 1, 1.52 meters. So to get the reach, we'll do square root of 1 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 2 squared plus 0 0.5. And that equals 2.69 plus 0 0.5 equals 3.19 meters reach. So this is just kind of a basic way to specify the robot. So how do we actually find 
what robot that would be. Like who makes these robots and where do we pick one out? Well, there are four main robot manufacturers for industrial applications. These are ABB, Fanuc, KUKA, and Motoman, also known as Yaskawa. So you could go to a website for any of these and use their robot search filter to, with your payload and your reach to figure out what robot to get. So as an example, we will go to ABB's website and use their filter. So here, we'll say any application, since we weren't given a certain application in the example, then we'll just go with any. The payload, we remembered we need about 150. So it looks like here, that would be 60 to 225. 150 is in that range. Now for the reach, we need something that's 3.19. So here that category is over 2.55. So now, these are all of the robot families that we could choose from. So we'll just kind of go through, we remember 150 and 3.2. So 6640 family could be an option. Uh, 6650S, that also has things in that range. 6700, it's got stuff in our range. And 7,600 also has stuff in our range. So lots of ones to choose from. Um, we want to stick pretty close to the payload in the reach that we found because if you get a robot that is too big, then it actually won't be able to reach stuff that's really close to it. And plus it just takes up too much space and it's more expensive. If you get a robot that's too small, then you can actually break the robot trying to lift something that's too heavy or it won't be able to touch the places that you need. So let's go to 6700, see if they have a robot that will work for us. So if we scroll down here, uh, we'll look at the data sheet. So if we download the data sheet, we can see all of the robots that come with this one. So here, now the way ABB names their robots is great. They are my favorite robot manufacturer because they are the easiest to program and they, their names of their models are actually descriptive of the payload and the reach. So in here, 6700 is the robot family. Then after the dash, the first number is the load that it can lift in kilograms. The second number is the distance it can reach in meters. So we want something that's around 150 kilograms and 3.19 meters. So if we go here, this one is really close. 6,700, 150, 320. So we'll go with this robot. You can see it has a 3.2 meter reach, which is close to 3.19. And it has 150 kilogram handling capacity, which is also what we were looking for. You can see some of these other things, center of gravity kilograms and then the wrist torque. So this center of gravity kilograms, this is how much the robot actually weighs. And then the wrist torque is how much it can handle on, it, on its wrist. We'll go down a little bit here and look at workspaces. So these, this is a two-dimensional sagittal plane view of all the spaces that the robot can reach. Now, the first joint, joint one, can spin usually like plus or minus 170 degrees, so not quite in a full circle, but this area is what the robot can reach. So you can tell that in front of it, it can reach pretty close, but it's got this sort of little bubble of emptiness that it can't touch because the robot is programmed not to plow into itself. And that is at the center of the wrist. Now, if the robot is pointed straight out like this, holding something, 
that's its weakest point. Though you'll have the greatest torque on the edge of the wrist when it's sticking out straight. If the robot were to rotate this wrist so that it was pointed down in a vertical configuration, then it would be the strongest because that is the least amount of torque on the wrist. And this robot can also reach a little bit below itself. So sometimes you'll see robots on a pedestal and it can reach behind itself too if it needs to. So we found a good robot and we can go back here. And if we want to, we can download CAD models and drawings or we can download the data sheet or anything else. So we will actually download the technical specification as well here, which is the manual. This manual covers all of the robots in that family. This is the one that we want. So we'll go back here and we'll write down that we decided to get ABB 6700, 150, 320. This is the robot that we want to get. Now, to make sure that this is going to work for our application, we should now do a more advanced analysis of it. So we want to go deeper into details on the payload and the reach based on specifications that are given in the manual and make sure that it's going to work for the, that our actual task.